December 31st, 0079, the One Year War is approaching its conclusion. Come New Year, the Federation forces were victorious. The Principality of Zeon was to face a bitter defeat. However, to quote Gerrit Schmitzer of the Midnight Fenrir Corps, as long as there are comrades who continue to fight for their beliefs, kindled by their love for those on the home front, our own battle will likely never end. The story of Zeon remnants after the One Year War is quite fascinating to say the least. Some chose to live and eventually die on the run. Some had retreated to their strongholds at Granada, Garden of Thorns and Axis, while others chose to form guerrilla groups. One of these groups was led by the stash sporting stalwart soldier who sought to support side freeze scions, that is Noyan Bitter. Noyan Bitter is a commander of Zeon's Kimberlite forces and a minor antagonist of the anime OVA 0083 Stardust Memory. Outwardly, the man seems very calm and reserved, while possessing an air of affability on top of being a skillful leader of his forces, earning the rank of Major General by the time we first see him in the OVA. The feat of managing to maintain a military base within an abandoned diamond mine for over three years with minimal supplies and with 10 mobile suits still remaining operational is a direct testament to it. During this arduous task, Bitter's tenacity is what lets the Kimberlite forces operate in spite of the losses sustained in the skirmishes with the Federation forces over the years. He is also shown to hold a high degree of reverence towards his men, choosing to honor the memory of the fallen by having their pictures within his room. His mobile suit of choice is the late production model MS-06F2 Zaku 2 F2, painted in a drab light green color scheme and sporting a pair of optional rocket boosters, allowing for higher jumps. The F2 itself isn't a particularly fancy model, it's essentially just an improved version of the F-Type, featuring more standardized parts, better thrust output and a slightly better armor, and given how big the surplus of these units was, it could be considered the quintessential Xeon grunt machine of the early 0080s. Assuming the man had a choice in the matter, I'd say the presence of the commander type antenna and the abundance of replacement parts is what made Bitter choose a Zaku F2 over something like the Dom Tropen. During his sortie in the show, he's seen carrying an MMP-78 Zaku machine gun, chambered in 120mm and featuring an underslung grenade launcher. Before the events of 0083 Stardust Memory, Bitter is mentioned in passing in the second episode of MS Igloo 2, where he was leading a ground force division on July 0079, holding the rank of a colonel at the time. Noyan Bitter makes his first appearance in 0083's fourth episode, Attack and Retreat on the Burning Sand, where he's seen welcoming Anna Vulgato at the Kimberlite base in Africa on October 23rd, UC 0083. One of the first giveaways as to who Bitter is as a person starts to show when Gato compliments his perseverance while commenting on the state of the base, which Bitter brushes off, saying that it's nothing Gato or men like him wouldn't be able to do. To Bitter, keeping the proverbial flame alive was nothing more than his duty. A duty to Zeon, his men and himself alike, and that's more than likely what kept his team together. Being a Giren loyalist, like both the last and Double Zeta's Desert Rommel is more than happy to share the last bottle of champagne with the Zeon Ace Pilot and even offers to provide Gato with the base's last HLV in order to let the stolen Gundam GPO-2 rendezvous with Zeon remnants in space. Despite the ideals, Bitter is also shown to be capable of walking the walk as well, as seen when he orders his team to shoot down Nick Orville's Core Fighter 2 in order to keep the location of their base a secret. He also has enough foresight to prepare the base's six remaining mobile suits for sortie as well, given that at this point, the chances of the Albion and the rest of the Federation forces being on their trail are somewhat high. Of course, he's going as well. Commander or not, he is a soldier first and foremost, choosing to carry out a direct attack on the Albion 
alongside his men, in a formation of two Dom Tropens and four Zaku 2 F2s. After he sorties in his F2 to buy Gato some time, he gives Lieutenant Val the command over the Kimberlite base, ordering the man to surrender to the Federation forces once the HLV is launched, as he doesn't want his men to squander their lives. While his attack has some initial success, with Bitter himself crippling Alpha A base GM Custom and his team landing a couple of hits on the Albion itself, they start sustaining multiple losses. As the Albion spots the HLV and prepares to open fire at it, he grits his teeth, ordering the remainder of the mobile suit team to charge the Federation ship directly, with Noyan Bitter himself being at the front of the formation, though his green F2 landed on the Albion. Pointing the weapon at the ship's bridge at a near point-blank range, he never managed to open fire in time, with Ko Araki's Gundam GP-01 shooting the Zaku's cockpit, ending his life. In the end, Bitter was a virtuous man who put those who served alongside him before himself, and even despite being loyal to Giran Zabi's regime, he carried himself more akin to people like Rambar Roll and Gerrit Schmitzer. This video has been my attempt to make something in the vein of Metty Not The Bad Guy's character breakdowns, since I've enjoyed the guy's content ever since late 2010s, so one could say that this is a bit of an homage to the format. Now, to address the elephant in the room, yes, I'll cover the manga appearance as well. In the 0083 Rebellion manga, Bitter first shows up in Chapter 17, holding the rank of Rear Admiral, and his introduction in the story remains roughly the same as in the OVA. However, in this manga, Nick Orville's fate is slightly different, with the Albion spotting his base directly and forcing the man's hand somewhat sooner. In this iteration of the story, Noyan Bitter sorties in a gargantuan jury-rigged machine, the Adzam Repair Mobile Armor. While it somewhat goes against the presumed lack of resources at the base, the presence of the machine is more than sufficient to serve as a distraction in order to aid Gato's escape. On top of having enough presence to make Albion's crew break a sweat, only being stopped by Dick Allen doing his best Slagger Law impression and with Ko Uraki shooting the machine's cockpit apart. I personally prefer the OVA version, since it doesn't dull out the desperate nature of Kimberlite's last sortie and doesn't end up painting bitter as a Dozel Zabi stand-in, even though the fact that he piloted just another grunt was arguably a part of his character. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you feel like subsidizing these shenanigans, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash theshirtlad, and should you want to have a glorious last stand against the Federation ship, I'm guessing some of the Gundam games would be your best bet. No, I wasn't able to slip in a Shimonata ad spot, Believe me, I've tried. Have a good one. Shirtlad, signing out.